Hi, I'm Fabrice Harari. Uh, welcome to my .NET course developed for WX DEF CON 2013. Uh, in this course we're going to try to see how we can use uh, the power of .NET inside our WinDev, WebDev and WinDev mobile project and how that can open to us lots and lots and lots of uh, functionalities. Let's start by defining what is .NET so that we all talk about the same thing. .NET is a some no software framework by Microsoft. If you want to compare it to something, uh, you should compare it to the uh, framework that is coming with WinDev, all these DLLs that contains all these function. Well, this is exactly what .NET is made by Microsoft. It is a framework uh, for Windows, so that is your target when you're using .NET, always Windows. There is uh, some things for some version of Windows Mobile. Um, not all of them, uh, as far as I know. And for uh, Windows itself, all the different versions of Windows. So basically, it's a very large library of function made by Microsoft and uh, available in uh, any kind of language that is .NET compatible. Uh, one thing extremely important is that it provides language interoperability. What does that mean? Well, for us, it means that we can create a .NET assembly, that's the name now, it's not a DLL, it's not an ActiveX, it's not this, it's called an assembly. So we can create a .NET assembly with WinDev and this .NET assembly can be used by any .NET language. The exact same way, we can use a .NET assembly in WinDev and it may have been built with any .NET language. So. Um, it's about the same thing that when you're calling an API, you don't know what tool we use to call the API, you just call it. Same thing for an ActiveX, same, same thing for OLE automation. You don't know the original language. Well, they um, decided to uh, basically trying to replace all that APIs, ActiveX, OLE automation by a new mechanism called .NET and uh, everything made by Microsoft now is .NET. They have one uh, big uh, development tool that is .NET. It's the their uh, their huge uh, uh, Visual Studio. Uh, if we are here, it's that because we prefer to use WinDev, but that doesn't mean that we cannot use uh, .NET in WinDev. What can you do with an about.NET in our tools? Well, the first thing that we should do is, as usual, if you already followed some of my courses, you know that I'm going to repeat myself, read the help. The keyword in this case is .NET, and the first thing that you should do when you want to use .NET is to read every page you can find in the help about .NET. Now, let's resume uh, what you will find in the help in a more detailed way. The first thing that you can do in uh, WinDev is you can create a full-fledged .NET application. Uh, for that, the only thing that you need to do is change the generation options to .NET application. That's basically all. After that, you have your wizard to generate and, and that's it. The question is, why? Well, um, I don't really know. Uh, I must say that I've never had to uh, do that. And I'm guessing that the only case where I would do that is if I had a customer, like a big company, who accepts only a .NET application on their machines, for whatever reason they may have. Um, I don't think that it makes any sense, but uh, the option is there and I'm guessing that it's because some people uh, want to have just a .NET application. 
uh, doesn't make a lot of difference to me because everything you need to have in your window application will still be there you'll just have on top of it also the need for uh, the dotnet framework so it's there not a lot of uh, interest for me now you can create a dotnet assembly and that is much more interesting uh, why? Well, let's have a look at what that means, creating a .NET assembly. First thing that you have to know is that it is based on the W language classes. When you are offering an assembly to the outside world, it is your classes, your object-oriented programming classes. Uh, which means that you really, really, really need to uh, follow in detail my course on object-oriented programming if you're not fluent in that system and if you haven't done so yet. So, uh, we're not going to review the whole classes things here, absolutely not, it's not the purpose of this course, but remember that if you want to create a .NET assembly, it's going to be based on your classes. And also, you will have, basically, once you have your classes developed in W language, to change the generation options to .NET assembly, instead of creating a WinDev executable. That's about the complexity of the whole thing to create a .NET assembly. So, why would you want to create a .NET assembly? Well, clearly, it's to give access to either your function or your data. Your function. Imagine that you are uh, creating a very clever tool, a development tool, a management tool, whatever. You're creating a tool. And you want not only to sell it as a standalone piece of software, but you want to sell it to every other developer on this planet to be integrated inside their software. Well, that's one very good way to do it. Uh, you In WinDev you can already create components, but the components are for WinDev user only. Here, when you create a .NET assembly, it can be used by a WinDev developer, but it can be used by any developer using any type of .NET compatible language. So clearly, it's a big market. Now, you can give access to your function and have some clever uh, programming inside that does this, that, the other, and that you give uh, uh, to the world as function. But you can also open access to your database application. Uh, imagine that you have a big uh, uh, accounting, CRM, or whatever uh, function. Instead of giving people access to your data directly, you can give them access to a .NET assembly and the .NET assembly is going to control the data access. So you can make your data access secure because the outside world still see a, a, a completely encrypted database and only the people who have the credential verified inside the database with whatever security system that you want to implement can use your .NET assembly to access only the part of the data that they are allowed to. You can make your access as limited as you want. You can give them access only to a part of one file or you can give them a full access to uh, everything, not only the data itself but also several higher level functions that are processing statistic, uh, statistics on your data and directly give them access to the statistics. So really you can do whatever you want and by doing that what you're doing is you are creating your own API for your program. So it is clearly an extremely powerful tool, an extremely powerful possibility that you have to open your software to the outside world. Now, the last thing that we can do really in, uh, in WinDev with .NET, we can use an existing .NET assembly. And that also is extremely powerful. This is exactly like using the API, uh, using an ActiveX or OLA automation. You can use now outside tools uh, created in the .NET system. Any 
type of external tool that has been created like that. But remember one thing, this is all object. So everything that you will get from the outside is a series of classes and you will have to instantiate the class, use object, return object, do this, do that. So if once again you are not good with objects then I refer you to my object oriented programming class uh, course sorry because we are not going to review all that here it's a separate thing it's just going to be needed here uh, as a basis to comprehend everything else we are now going to use a .NET assembly there are several examples of using uh, .NET assemblies coming with Windev 18. Uh, here I chose to use the WD text to speech and uh, we are going to do a quick demo of uh, that uh, assembly and what it does. Welcome to the .NET course. Wow, this thing can't talk. See you soon, for another course. That was bluffing. How do you do that? Well, um, the first thing to do in your project, you go in the Project Explorer, in the .NET Assemblies part, right-click, use a .NET Assembly in this project. Look, that's how it's done. So, Project Explorer, .NET Assemblies, and here you can see that there are already .NET Assemblies, but if they were not there, right-click, use a .NET Assembly in this project. And when you do that, you have a list of all the .NET assembly that are available on your system. And as you can see, there is quite a big number of them. Lots of things by Microsoft, Office, and so on and so forth. PowerShell, basically everything that you can think of is somewhere in there and you can see that we have currently two uh, assemblies integrated MS Core Lib and I would guess that by this name it's the core library for the Microsoft assembly system and then system speech all that is part of this system speech assembly which is standard on my system So that's basically the starting point. That's how you uh, integrate it inside your program. So which assembly to use? As you have seen, there is a huge list on my system and I did not install anything special. It just came with a different Windows update and this uh, and Office and this and that. I didn't install a, a pack of development or anything specific. Well, that is not a WinDev problem. Uh, I repeat myself, if you already followed the uh, uh, API course or the early automation course, again, we are talking about using an external tool. If you don't know which one to use, um, this is not a WinDev question. You should do a Google search and uh, find out which Google, uh, which uh, sorry, uh, .NET assembly is matching your need. And that is really a problem that is outside our purview today. Now, let's have a look at the code. In this project, in the project init of the code, there is a check of what .NET version is installed because clearly you're using an outside tool and you need to make sure that the tool that you need is there. So let's have a look. If we go in the project code, 
here it is this here is an example on how you check that and what is that doing check.net version well let's have a look it is taking the list of the .NET version using the W language .NET version. That's all there is to it. And then looking in all the versions that are installed, which is the bigger one. And if the bigger one is less than 3.0, the program will not work. Why? Well, clearly because this system speech uh, assembly is part of the framework version 3 and higher than that. So if it's not installed, you cannot use it and your program will not work. And that is one of the problems that you will get, that you will have to manage when you are working with .NET assemblies. Are they available? Now, the second thing that we need to look at in this program is the collection of uh, procedure called p text to speech It's a set of global procedure, but it could be a class. This is just the thing that things have been organized in that example. Uh, as you can see, the calls to the assembly do not need to be in a class, but the, the assemblies themselves are classes. So, Let's look. Global procedure. There's one set of procedure. And in there, there is the check.net version that we already saw. And then speak, speak and, speak ready in progress, speak to file. Four different procedure that we're going to have a look at later. In the whole thing, there is only one variable. It is GCL text to speech, and it's defined as is speech synthesizer. Look at it. It's in the procedure itself. In the declaration of the global procedure, there is one variable. Now the question is, what is this speech speech synthesizer? Well. As you can see, if I do a F2 on the thing, nothing happens. So it's clearly not something that is directly inside our WinDev program. So I'm guessing, it's really a wild guess, that it is part of this assembly. I'm guessing also that it's going to be part of the system speech and not of the MS Corley, but I could be wrong. So if I look at the MS Corley, as you can see, there is a lot of things here lot of things but nothing that look like it's talking about uh, speech in this what do we have well we have sp first sp sub level and this sub level I'm going to increase the size of that so that we can read better it's system speech audio format mm, maybe system speech recognition oh this assembly is able to recognize voice system speech recognition espresso grammar okay system speech synthesis ah now now we're talking system speech synthesis that looks like something where we could have a speech synthesizer in it so let's have a look do we have a speech synthesizer yes we do speech and you see here, this is your regular symbol for a class. So what you have here, this is one assembly. This is another assembly. And in this assembly, clearly, we have tons of classes. Tons and tons and tons of classes. So, speech synthesizer is in system speech, in system speech synthesis, and it's a class. So, how do you know uh, what speech synthesizer is and that it's the one that you should use in the assembly? Well, you have to read the fucking manual and you have to Google it it is an external tool you will not find the answer either 
in the, uh, the, the, the WinDev help or in, on WinDev's forums except if you very lucky and somebody else already used the same one but you can see that there are tons and tons and tons and tons of things now you've seen that in our uh, example we have we are using only four global procedure and yet there are hundreds of methods available in this assembly doing tons of things and it's only one assembly one very small part of the uh, the the .NET framework. So, before you get a headache, let's look at the procedure, how they are used in the window, in the project, and what they are doing. If we look at the windows, there's only this win example, and you remember it's a very small window. So, what does it do? In the initialization code, it is doing speak, which is one of the global procedure, and speaking that text. So, how is the speak function working? Well, the speak function is looking for a sentence, then locking is boolean, true if the reading of the text is locking false otherwise, which means that you can have some text being talked while you're doing something else okay that's interesting and then you have the speed of the reading as you can see there is a slider in the window and you can slow down or have a faster uh, text now uh, what are we doing after that well first if speak reading in progress so that is another of our uh, global procedure. So clearly we don't want to have two voice at the same time. That's not going to work well. So we're testing if this is already in progress. And otherwise, we are doing our first assembly thingy. So this GCL text to speak is the variable of the speech synthesizer class this one and here we are ca calling self output default audio device and if we try to go in there double click on the method we see what we see this comments if there are any as you can see in some method there are some uh, parameters telling you something and we see that there is no parameter here uh, clearly what you get inside an assembly like that is what the developer of the assembly set for you and clearly in a case like that you need to get on the web and find the documentation for the whole thing well hopefully here uh, the name of the of the function is quite talking set output to default audio device okay so this thing is clearly directing the sound to my speakers then what do we do set the rate of talking with the end speed value so if we look in there do we have anything there is no code found in set rate okay so let's see set rate set rate is it telling me anything no so how do you know what range of value you can send you don't if you don't look it out on the web on the documentation of the the, the framework itself you will not know after that what are we doing we're doing speak which again is just calling one function of the uh, the assembly class and depending if we ask for locking or not we are doing speak asynchronous 
and that's it as you can see using the assembly is extremely simple they are just here this added to manage an exception and it's just returning false and not even managing the error or doing anything like that so uh, this is really 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 simple it's just calling a few function of the assembly how do you know which function you read the documentation of the assembly it's the only way there is no way around that now if we look at the other one speak reading in progress speak reading in progress is looking at this okay that's all there is to it again a function speak and look if there is a speak in progress if not then there's nothing to stop and otherwise it is stopping all correct all speak that have been uh, asked to be done by the assembly and speak to file again this one is setting the output to a wave file the rate is the same and you have the speak or the speak async so the only difference here is the output to the uh, wave file and look at here set output to audio stream set output to default audio device set output to null set output to wave file unicode string set output to wave stream as a stream so really you see that there are many different uh, functions available here and we are using using only a, a, a smidgen of all the things that are available in just this assembly and this assembly is just one little 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 drop inside the whole uh, Microsoft framework and we are not even talking about anything else than the Microsoft framework itself and not all the things that are uh, created by somebody else so it's really really a huge 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 opening on the outside world